Hello and welcome back to Here Is Your Answer. I'm Dr. Paul Bryant, your host for this broadcast. Our goal is to inspire you spiritually, to encourage you in your relationships, and also share tips that will help you to improve your health. Before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Father God, again, we take this moment to come into your presence. We pray that what we will learn during this broadcast will help us spiritually, emotionally, and also physically. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want to go to the screen at this time. Elijah's battle with Queen Jezebel from depression to ascension. Once there was a very wicked king of Israel. His name was Ahab. And he married a more wicked woman named Jezebel. Why no one named their daughter Jezebel? I believe that is because she was such a wicked woman. And I don't think you know anyone who has named their daughter Jezebel. Ahab and Jezebel led Israel into terrible idol worship. So God sent the prophet Elijah to tell Ahab the punishment would be a severe famine. However, God provided food and water for his prophet. After three and a half years, the prophet Elijah showed up. Then God's prophet and Baal prophet's faced off for a decisive showdown. They built altars, placed wood, and put sacrifices on them. Then each asked his deity, his God, to bring down fire from heaven. All day long, the prophets of Baal called on their God, but no fire fell. Finally, they gave up. Then Elijah prayed and the fireworks started. The Bible tells us that fire fell from heaven. Then the fire of the Lord fell down and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Fire, fire, fire fell from heaven. When the people saw it, they cried, the Lord he is God, the Lord, he is God. Then the prophets of Baal were executed. That day, Elijah stood at the pinnacle of success. But when Jezebel heard the story, she was furious and she decreed his death. The prophet became so scared that he ran for his life and he sat under a broom tree. Depression set in. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19.4, and he prayed that he might die. And he said, it is enough now, Lord. Take my life. You see, depression overwhelmed him. So what is depression? Major depression is a mental illness that causes persistent feelings of sadness and loss of pleasure in activities that are normally enjoyable. Depression is often triggered by terrible life experiences like loss, grief, divorce, domestic violence, sexual abuse, and military combat. To understand depression, let's peep into the human brain. We learned earlier that the brain has one billion cells. They are called neurons, neurons and synapses. Between these neurons are structures called synapses. Neurons communicate with each other across these synapses. And each neuron can make from 1,000 to 200,000 connections. A deficiency in the functioning of these transmitters cause an imbalance. 
This imbalance produces changes in mood and results in depression. So what are some of the symptoms of depression? Well, there are sleep problems. There are perpetual overwhelming feelings of sadness and also feeling of worthlessness. Difficulty concentrating and making decisions. Feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. It seems that there's no way out and that there will never be a way out. It can make its victim think that God doesn't care. Life isn't worth living. Suicide is a great way out. So like Jesus, we cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. So how did Elijah deal with his depression? He used five strategies, and so can we. Strategy number one, get enough sleep. Elijah had a stressful day physically, emotionally, and mentally. And in order to recuperate, he needed rest. 1 Kings 19, 5 and 6 tells us, Then he laid down and slept under a broom tree. And after being awakened, he lay down again. Your body has a biological clock which regulates sleeping and waking. There is a term called the condyrian rhythm. Frequent interruptions of this rhythm can cause sleep disorders and depression. How to get a good night's sleep? Number one, take a warm bath before bedtime to aid relaxation. Use soothing music to calm the mind and body. Number three, ban alcohol, nicotine, and caffeine because they affect the quality of sleep. Establish and maintain a regular time to go to sleep and to wake up. Keep the room dark and quiet. Use spiritual meditation and prayer before retiring. God wants to give you sleep. I will both lay down in peace and sleep, David says in Psalms 4, verse 8. Number two, eat brain foods. Elisha ate nourishing food. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake bread on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came by the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. I wonder what food the angel brought for him. Whatever it was, it was food for his brain. What are the brain foods? These are foods that have tryptophan or omega-3. They energize the brain and help us to combat depression. Foods rich in tryptophan are tofu, flax seeds, sesame seeds, almonds, and walnuts. We get omega-3 from some fish like mackerel and salmon. We can also get omega-3 from flaxseed, wheat germ, and soybean. Remember, this was the original diet that God gave to humans. Again, as we read from Genesis 1.29, the Bible says, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food. Number three, do whole body exercise. First Kings 19.8 says, 
tells us that Elijah tells us that after he ate and slept, Elijah went on a 40-day hike. Whole body exercise can help us to beat depression and give us additional strength and brain power. Aerobic exercises increases the level of serotonin in the brain and combats depression. Exercise also helps the body to release chemicals called endorphins. Endorphins cause us to feel good and help us to combat depression. How much exercise is recommended? It is recommended that we should exercise at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week. The fourth strategy takes cognitive therapy. One of the most serious causes of depression is distorted thinking. Changing my thoughts will change my behavior. Cognitive therapy aims at changing my thinking. So if needed, use the services of a Christian therapist. God confronted Elijah's negative thinking by asking him, what are you doing here, Elijah? The great physician was doing cognitive behavior therapy. Strategy number five, listen to the voice of God. When God visited Elijah, he did not speak by wind, earthquake, or fire. He spoke in a still, small voice to soothe the prophet's soul. Today, God still visits us and speaks to us in a still, small voice, which is the scriptures. God can lift depression. Jeremiah 15, 16 tells us, your words were found and I ate them and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. That's what God's word can do for you. It can encourage you and lift you up out of depression. Persons with chronic depression need medication. However, the more we use God's five-point plan, the less medication we will need. The good news is this. With this five-point plan, Elijah overcame depression. And so can you. So what are the five strategies to combat depression? Number one, get adequate sleep. Number two, eat brain foods. Number three, do whole body exercise. Number four, take cognitive behavior therapy. And number five, listen to God's voice. How many of you want to say yes to these five strategies? If this is your desire to incorporate these strategies into your lifestyle, why don't you give yourself a big thumbs up? One day, something wonderful happened to Elijah. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings 2.11, Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah ascended to heaven, the Bible tells us. Amazing. The man who prayed to die went to heaven without dying. Later on, what happened to Jezebel? Now when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and looked through a window. Then he said, throw her down. And when he had gone in, he ate and drank. Then he said, go see to this accursed woman and bury her, for she is a daughter 
of a king. The Bible goes on to say that, so they went out to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. The dogs had eaten Jezebel, that wicked woman. This was a fulfillment of Elijah's prophecy. On the plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 36. Jezebel had no burial. Dogs ate her body. Upward, Elijah went. Downward, Jezebel went. Jezebel moved from exaltation to destruction. Elisha moved from depression to ascension. You must make a choice. We all must make a choice. Whether to stand with Jezebel or to stand with Elijah. Stand with Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. Stand with Elijah, God's true prophet. Stand with Jezebel, that's salvation man's way. Live as you please. Stand with Elijah, salvation is God's way. Accept the blood of Jesus. Stand with Jezebel, worship man's way. Sunday. Stand with Elijah, worship God's way. The Sabbath day. Stand with Jezebel. Surrender. No way. No baptism. Stand with Elijah. Surrender God's way. And be baptized. Stand with Jezebel and Satan. And you will enter to the fires of hell. Stand with Elijah and Jesus. And you will experience the glories of heaven. Tonight, I want to encourage you to make a choice to stand with God. When Jesus comes again, what will happen to Christ's people? Christ's people, dead or resurrected. First Thessalonians 4, 16 tells us, Christ's people who are alive will be translated 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. When Jesus comes, what happens to Satan's people? The Bible tells us Satan's people alive will fall dead. Satan's people dead will stay dead until Christ returns. Revelation 20, verse 5. For 1,000 years, Christ's people are alive in heaven. Satan's people are dead on the earth. And Satan is bound with no one to tempt. All of this can be found in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. At the end of the millennium, or the 1,000 years, the new Jerusalem with Christ and his people begins to descend. Satan's people are raised from the dead. He is now, he now has people to tempt, so he is loosed. Satan tries to capture the descending city. Lucifer gives the order, and his vast army moves toward and moves forward. It is an awesome army. Everyone down through the ages who have followed Satan will follow him for this last major conquest. Suddenly, fire falls from heaven and destroys Satan, sin, and suffering. When the fire is over, God will create a brand new earth. Then the new Jerusalem will complete its descent. It will be a glittering city. Oh, what a wonderful city. Its walls are made of jasper. Its foundations have precious stones. It had 12 gates 
they are made of pearl. Its streets are gold, pure, transparent gold. Can you just picture that in your mind? The countryside will also be beautiful. Beautiful flowers and, and fragrant fragrances will fill the air. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 65, 21, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the little children shall lead them. There will be peace and tranquility in God's new earth. Everything made new. Revelation 21, 5 says, then, who, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. No more. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, and no more crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. No more sickness, no more suffering, no more oppression, no more depression, no more pain. We'll be happy and healthy for all eternity. If that's your desire to join Jesus in the earth made new, I want you to bow your heads and, and pray with me as we offer this prayer of commitment to him. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for the wonderful promises that you have given us in your word. There are many of us who are depressed. We feel lonely. We feel that no one cares for us. No one loves us. Even some people feel as though that God has forsaken them. But Father, we pray in a very special way that we will realize that you love us with an everlasting love. And you have promised us that one day, if we are faithful and continue to follow you and give our hearts to you, that we will see you when you return in the clouds of glory. And after you have destroyed this old wicked world with this sin and suffering, you will then create a new world, as we have seen from the scriptures. And we will be with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. There will be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering, no more depression. But we will have peace of mind and joy in our hearts throughout all eternity. And Lord, the only thing that you ask us to do is to commit ourselves to you, follow you, and love you. And Father, we want to make a commitment today to give our hearts and also give our life to you. And I pray, Father, for those who have been watching this series, I want to pray that as they have made up their mind to follow you, I ask you, Lord, that they will find their local Seventh-day Adventist church. Meet with the pastor, meet with the elder, and tell them that they have been watching this series and that they want to give their life totally to you, and they want to be baptized. So, Father, I pray that you'll be with them as they make this commitment. Give them the strength to follow through. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. And I also want to encourage you to um, subscribe to this channel, share our channel, and those who are interested in more information in a deeper Bible study, I want you to go to hereisyouranswer.org. Tap on the tab that says Bible study, and you will be able to pull down the lesson that corresponds with this message from this broadcast. And also there are other broadcasts that we have done. There are less lessons that correspond with all of them. So until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you. Goodbye for now.